This album consists of a bunch of tracks that didn't make it to official releases It's yeah. still dope enough to wanna put it on repeat quick So peep this, throw us in your CD player uh -huh. Oh I forgot they're non-existent dog, shit has changed major. major So scratch that, throw it in your iPod player Like my God, he write hard, a ball on your finger Show they throw back, so give it away for free like old boy yeah. Go and make noise and when you hear, hope you jump for joy, joy. I'm optimistic, glass ain't half empty, it's half full Hopefully by now you know me from the jazz camp So that was years ago, so I brought I'm on fire to doubt stools and playing by house rules. I lay back like a couch crew. I'm that dude to make his own beats, writes his own rhymes, records his own shit. That's probably why it takes so much time to put out an album. Man, I'm always behind schedule. Ain't that I ain't hungry, I just always got my plate full. Try to digest all the topics that I'm spitting. You need to sit back and actually take the time to listen. We living in a new age with mind states of people. Kids' attention spans are shorter than Danny DeVito. My beats don't be banging, be about my business. Bass stays knocking like a Jehovah Witness. Leave them scattering with chattering. The gang of rhyme patterns I ain't worth challenging. You all need some aspirin. Inspiring to be me, no empires to feed. Just a chosen few that's flowing through. Firing up the weed. Jesus, crazy what the world coming to. I'm here to live it, make music. We all is just hanging on a gimmick. Wait a minute, man. Don't get me confused with none of these newbie-ass rappers, man. I know the game be feeling fucked up. But I've been making beats since 95, regardless if I had the right emotion or not. Word up. Hey, yo, I ain't always humble. I ain't always intense. I've had my good and bad days like anyone else, more or less. Probably a lot more than less. So the more of it, in a sense, feel blessed. So I just move forward through the stress. But don't smoke stress. Smoke the bomb weed you ever seen. Cannabis club category, certified Cali Green. Type of bomb that I keep up in my sack. They give a lot of cats anxiety attack. There's no denying the facts. But enough about the weed, though. I keep it on a need to know basis. It's time for me to cut to the chase quick. So download the free LP. Spread it to your friends and family Even to the little haters mad at me I got two official LPs coming after these We're live again Second time today Happy Sunday folks To those of you that are here with me um, Microphone's going Some people are here We're not at our usual time But, you know We're doing what we can do um, Welcome guys, I hope everyone's having a good day um, if you guys were with us on the live chat on Fabio's, uh, channel for the judging of his competition, that was a ton of fun. Um, and thank you guys for being there. Um, so that was that competition. That was his Macintosh competition. There were so many amazing images. Um, judging for that one was super, super tough. Um, but, uh, that's a good thing, right? The amount of cool work still being made even with everything going on right now is an inspiring thing and i'm happy to see that people are staying productive um vlad what's going on buddy yeah that that, that was nuts yeah 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 absolutely crazy uh, but thank you for being here thank you for coming back um we have a, a shorter one today but i think a good one and i think it'll be good for its brevity um milan what's going on man happy to have you here um so today we're going to talk about my practice routine, which you guys have, the only people here, let's be honest, are the people that are here all the time. And by the way, I really appreciate you. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope that you learn occasionally a thing or two, maybe. Um, but I hope it's a nice distraction from everything going on in the world. And I know from me having to do them every day, um, you guys make it worth it for me and are continuing to make sure that I continue to push myself. So um, I really appreciate it. I just want to say thank you particularly for you guys here right now. Um, but today, you guys have probably heard me talk about uh, my morning practice, which I do every day. I do it for, I try to do it for an hour. I do it for at least a half an hour. Sometimes it runs into an hour and a half. It kind of depends on the day. And like these live streams are another hour that I need to chunk out of my day every day. Um, so some of them have gotten to be more like 30 minutes. But every morning, first thing I do is I practice. Um, and so today we're going to talk about that or give an example of my morning practice today that after a couple hours of sleep I did before um, Fabio's stream and uh, we're going to take a look at it. I'm not going to show you the finished finished piece because I think it'll be better if we watch the whole thing. Um, but the important thing to note or the thing that really changed for me as far as trying to be disciplined about my practice, um, which historically I have not been. Um, especially like the beginning of my career, whenever I had a thing I was trying to learn, I would just 
not sleep and just work my ass off and try to figure that out. And, you know, at, as a younger man uh, with less life responsibilities, that was, that was fine, right? Like work all day, get home, work on the thing that I was trying to work on. Um, especially as I've gotten older, that just, I can't do that, right? Daughter, wife, life, business, all of those things. Um, if I only practiced when I could find time for it, I wouldn't get any practice done. So much like people going to the gym, I schedule time for it. And the thing that uh, really clicked for me, and it only clicked four months ago, something like that, is that my practice routine actually starts the night before. Um, the last thing that I do at night, and sometimes that's super late at night, and sometimes that's, um, uh, you know, dinner time, depending on the day and how work's going and what I'm going to be doing that night. But the last time I'm at my desk for the day, um, I decide what I'm going to practice and I set that up. Um, so if I'm trying to paint, learn how to paint clouds, everything that I've been doing in the past couple of months has been like drawing related in one way or another. Um, less 3D stuff, a couple little 3D things, but they've been kind of like here and there. It's been, I want to get better at sketching and painting. Uh, so that's what I've been uh, actually working on. And so... The night before I decide I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna copy of something from Sparth, I'm gonna draw people, I'm just gonna work on drawing fundamentals, whatever it is it's gonna be. I decide that the night before and separating the decision uh, of what you're gonna practice from the time you actually practice it seems like a small thing, but at least for me and my experience has been a complete game changer. I think I'm a little quiet. Yeah, we'll see. You, maybe YouTube fixes it, but. Um, it's been a complete game changer for me because a lot of times if you're sitting down to practice, if it's something you don't feel like doing or something um, you're not excited about at that moment, you're probably not going to pick it, right? You can't, That laziness thing, the same thing that we've dealt with already twice on these streams, uh, kind of kicks in and you, you either pick something that's comfortable that you feel like doing and not necessarily the thing that you think is going to help you. Uh, but if you're not actually about to do it, you think, oh, I'll, I'll be in the mood for, you know, drawing circles or whatever it might be in the morning. Um, but that's what I'm going to practice. That's what's going to help me. Um, Mike, good to see you, my friend. Been enjoying some of your recent posts. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, but yeah, so the night before I pick whatever it's going to be that I'm going to practice and I set myself up so that when I wake up in the morning after, you know, um, potentially breakfast, now that the daughter's home all day, every day, um, making coffee, doing all the things you got to do in the morning, but like basically within the first half an hour of being awake, generally, um, when I get to the computer or get to my desk, if I'm drawing on paper, like my desk is cleared out and the paper's already laid out and I've already made the decision of what I'm going to work on. If it's something digital, I have a file opened up for whatever that's going to be. Um, and then it's not a decision, right? It's that same idea. Like I have to go to the gym every day. I don't very much not me. I respect the people that do. Never been able to figure that one out. But just the idea of I'm going to make the decision the night before and then the next day, I don't have a choice not to practice that. I can do terrible at it. I can half-ass it. I can do whatever within the realms that I've set up. But the important thing is that if I said I'm going to draw faces for an hour, that's what I'm going to do. Even regardless of whether I feel like it or whatever else, That decision that's not something I feel like I have the... Um, the right to change. And a lot of times you sit down and you're like, fuck, I'm not, I'm not good at drawing faces. I don't find it fun because I don't like doing things that I'm not good at, but I want to be able to do it. So you start drawing and it's usually pretty uninspired for a little while. But like after usually it's like maybe 10 minutes or so, um, that changes, at least for me. Like, and I kind of start to get like a rhythm and, and, and then by the end of like even just an hour, um, I feel like I've done something or accomplished something. Um, but it's like forcing yourself to do the thing that isn't easy, that you're not comfortable at or you're not good at, that I think is that's where growth happens. Um, and just a little bit every day helps. So they, I forget who said it. Um, so there's a great quote by somebody, and maybe one of you guys know this, which is um, humans by and large... Um, Humans, by and large, overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate what they can do in a year, which is to say little bits every day, even if it seems like just 30 minutes of doodling. If it's structured, if there's an intent and like a goal so that it's meaningful practice, which is not just doing the thing that I already know how to do over and over and over again, um, 
you start seeing results like more quickly than you would expect, even from that little bit of daily practice. And it's definitely more dramatic. It's not, it's dramatic's not the right word. It's more significant than like, I'm going to spend the next 48 hours doing nothing but trying to learn faces. Well, there's only so much, your brain's only so plastic, right? You can only learn so much. Um, so that's kind of the general routine. Nighttime, decide what I'm going to practice, set up my work area, close all my like windows on my computer that would potentially, you know, distract me or whatever else. Basically, usually if it's something in Photoshop, which as of late it has been, I have Photoshop open. I have the document. If I'm doing thumbnails, am I doing square thumbnails, portrait thumbnails, landscape por thumbnails? Like there's a template already open. There's like my music app open and that's it. And that's all I open until I'm done generally. Um, and so that's my that's that's the routine. And so let's look at last night's. And I have a video for us to watch the whole process. And I think that um, I think that watching it without seeing where it ends is important because it's not pretty. And I, there's a part of me that's like I am too embarrassed to show this. I'm not like proud of the image that ends at it. But I think that that makes it more valuable. Um, so let's find the screen that I'm looking for. It's this one. And you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, this, so this is um, my little like square template um, uh, template that I use. Uh, that, I don't know why I struggled over saying that one. Way to go, Mike. Um, and this is what I did last night. So this isn't, pr this is, I guess is practice. Um, but the thing that I want to practice as I've been talking about now every day, kind of at some point, um, for the past couple of weeks is, is painting in color and not just adjusting colors that are already there. Cause I'm very comfortable doing that. I've been doing that professionally for years and years and years, but actually like picking colors. Um, and so one of the important things with that is that if that's what I'm trying to do, trying to figure out what I'm going to paint, is not practice. It's not making me better at, at painting in color. And so I'm just doing some thumbnails here. Um, I think I did, I spent, this is like 12 minutes or so of drawing. Um, I ended up making um, not eight, but 16 of them. Uh, and I think it took me 12 minutes to do all of these. And there's no real goal here, except to pick something that everything's kind of landscapey. I didn't want to like, right now I'm not, worried about like being able to paint a piece of architecture accurately. This isn't a perspective exercise. It's a color exercise. And so I'm just looking for like a landscape that I kind of have an idea for to paint towards. Um, and that's it, right? Like, so that when I sit down, I'm not thinking, what should I paint? I'm thinking, how do I paint it? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and so these are just like doodles trying to come up with something that like, oh, that will be fun to do in color somehow. Um, I think right now in my head, I'm kind of leaning towards the third one uh, when I was doing this, but I ultimately go with one that I haven't drawn yet. The third one was going to be like this like big, like kind of like cliffy type mountain with like a little tiny army on the field. Um, and I still might draw that at some point because there's not a lot of stuff to paint in that. I think it would be a good exercise. Um, but just trying to come up with something that I think is cool that I would be excited about. And... Uh, I think the next drawing, one of these next drawings is the one I use, I think. Um, but again, this is like 12 minutes or so, 15 minutes of drawing. Uh, obviously, we're looking at it sped up. Uh, and I did this the night before. Um, so I'm not counting this as practice. This is like, you know, I had a beer and I quickly did this. Um, some variation of this drawing that I'm working on now, I think, I think maybe I do it again, is what I end up working on. It's like a kind of like quintessential like seascapey little thing with a house. Um, it's not the most interesting thing in the world. Um, but so there we go. That's the kind of like general composition that I do. Um, and all I'm doing right now is I don't want to paint over these like hard swaths of um, uh, of paint that I used to actually sketch the idea. So I'm just giving me, giving myself a couple of, of guidelines to kind of use as like what would be a pencil sketch if this was uh, a painting. Uh, and so at this point or at some point here, we're going to switch over and we're going to start actually painting in color. Um, I think this was this morning. Um, yeah, so we're going to start painting. And 
it starts out really bad. Like color is such a relative thing, right? Like if you have an orange canvas and you paint gray on it, that gray will feel cool uh, because it's in a sea of orange. And so like when we think of the colors that we think we see, and I'm kind of going for like a blue and green thing here, this looks fucking embarrassingly bad colors right now, right? And I picked them. You saw me pick them right from the like the chat there or from the um, uh, color picker. Our brain's relationship, again, like, and this is like one of those things of why I like thumbnailing in general so much is that like what we see in our heads and what those colors actually are are just, they, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between them. Um, but I'm just kind of pushing forward. At this point, I'm really thinking maybe I should try to do something else. This is God awful, terrible. Everything about what I'm looking at right now, I fucking hate. Um, but them's not the rules, right? The rules is you're going to paint this. I think I spent a total of like 35 minutes painting, um, today, which I wish was a little bit longer, but that other stream with Fabio, which was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for being there. Um, Obviously, it took up a lot of time, and uh, I was up late last night. Uh, so the, the rule is that you keep painting, right? Like, this looks terrible, but keep painting. If it ends terrible, that's okay. You learned something, or you learned what you need to learn next. Uh, and so I just painted, but I'd like everyone to like, just notice like how far away this looks from anything decent. Uh, and it's really easy, at least for me, to like give up at this point, to be like, nope, bad start, let's start again, and... What we're going to see is that I don't. I just keep pushing, pushing forward. It ends in a place that, like, I can see where where we end up. I'm not embarrassed, embarrassed by it. I'm embarrassed by what you guys are looking at right now. But I learned some things in the process. I'm still trying to, like, A, learn colors in, like, this more abstract form of not adjusting but picking. Um, and then, you know, how you try to, like, let's just get some color down and then we can start tweaking that. I know how to tweak colors. How do I get myself at least like the initial colors um, to look okay? Uh, and so that's what we're going to see. Um, Vlad, you're saying you have too many tabs open. I get in that place too. And when I do, I use an app called Freedom. Um, and it turns off all of the ones that I shouldn't have open. So it turns off Facebook. It turns off YouTube. Uh, it turns off Instagram, both on my phone and on my computer. I think it's like $3 a month or something like that. Um turns off Reddit, turns off Twitter, turns off all of the things that would potentially like distract me. Um, and usually what I find, if I, if I turn it off and I set like an hour of, of social media distraction embargo, um, well then five minutes from then I'm, I'm being productive. Um, though that's usually not a problem with practice. Um, that's usually more of a problem of if I have work to do that I don't feel like doing at the time. Uh, but I've, I've really liked the app. Um, I think it's worth the money, even though I don't use it every day. I do if I find myself being distracted. I'm like, well, I can fix that. I can't turn off the internet entirely and do my job because I need reference or I need, you know, licensed servers or whatever else it might be. Uh, but that app lets me turn off all of the things that I know I shouldn't be paying attention to. And as soon as you can kind of like get to working, you kind of forget that you don't want to do it and just get in the flow. Um, so I would recommend checking it out, giving it a try, seeing if it works for you as well. Um, yeah, the colors are still pretty god awful. I was kind of trying to think from like a color, a watercolor type perspective, um, as far as how I was trying to do color on this. That didn't work out. Though I still have some ideas on it. Um, we're starting light and only working progressively darker. Uh, that didn't work for me, and probably because I don't know what I'm doing. It's definitely a lesson that I'm continuing to learn with painting, um, and also because I think maybe that's just not the intuitive way that works for me. Uh, I'm sure that's not true for anybody else. Um, but you can see that we're, we're just continuing to work it. And now, you know, we're three quarters of the way through this video, which is a short one. I think watching this slowly would be painful for all of us. This is a big move that I was pretty excited about here where I'm painting in the shadow of this cliff, big and giant, or I'm using a curve and then I paint to fix the edge. That's where I think this is where the image finally started to feel like, okay, that was, a, that was a significant move. I should have thought of it earlier. I will think about it next time. But this is where the image, I still don't like how it looks, but I start to have a little bit of confidence that it's going to get somewhere um, at this point. Again, it's like a, what, a fantasy seascapey thing with some kind of quiz housey castle on the top. It's not anything mind-blowing. Um, did that skip a whole section? 
That felt like it skipped a section. We missed the section where I made it into something that I kind of like. Um, I have no idea how that happened. It could have been an OBS mistake. It could have been a me mistake. Um, what? What happens right before that? Let's go back to the shadow. Sorry for rewinding this. I just want to see if I lost attention there or if uh, I missed something. Yeah, so, uh, some things jumped there. Don't know what they are. Well, you can see the changes. Um, yeah, this morning's recording. This is about the time that I started, you know, getting ready for the judging stuff. Um, but it got to a point, like, like I said, this isn't something that I love, but I learned some things from it. And by forcing myself to continue working on it, as opposed to just kind of painting something bad and losing some confidence and not learning anything. I learned more because I continued to push and fight through it. And I picked up a little things like, oh, I should have thought of this earlier. I should have thought of this earlier. When I was painting in my colors initially, I should have, I was just trying to get something down everywhere. And I should have been a little bit more careful about the key colors, I think. Um, okay, those are all valuable lessons that, uh, that I can use to inform next time I try to kind of like paint from scratch, at least minus the design. Um, and it's all about pushing through through the struggles, right? Like when you hit a point and you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can't stop there. Because then you just, all, all that that does is it affects your confidence to be able to do it again in the future when you like when you hit a challenge and you don't push your way through it. So especially when you're like, this is shit, this is complete and utter garbage, uh, I'm just going to do something else. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible place to stop. Um, because even if you don't get to a place that you love, you need to get to a place where you're like, okay, I see what I did wrong there. I learned a lesson. This was not a complete and utter waste of time. I'll do better next time. And I have reason to believe that I actually will because I, I, I learned something. Um, so that was kind of the lesson. And that's basically, you know, what my practice routine is, which I don't know, maybe there's a piece of, of, um, Wisdom in there for you guys or something that you think might be useful. Um, I've also been using Brain FM off and on, which is like an app that's supposed to help you focus. And I don't know if it's complete placebo effect or not, but I've been liking it. So Freedom is an app to check out. If, like Vlad, you get distracted, which I definitely do. And uh, Brain FM, um, give it a try. There's like a some like a five day free trial or something like that. Um, it's supposed to like. I don't know, the rhythm of the modulation of lower frequencies is supposed to blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's science and AI or whatever. Who knows if it's... I haven't done any research to see if any of the studies are actually independently verified. Um, so maybe I just believe that it works and it does. But uh, I've been enjoying it, um, especially like the beginning of a work session uh, to kind of get me focused and, and working. Kind of the same time if I find myself procrastinating. So that's where that ended. And now we're just... It's looping. I should probably turn off. Um, so this is where the image end ended anyways. Can you guys see that? I think you can see that. Um, yeah. And that's what I do every morning. Um, because painting this, I'm not trying to get better at this for work reasons, though I'm, a, I'm sure that being a better painter will probably inform my um, professional and 3D work quite a bit. Uh, but because this is just like something that I want to be better at for my own thing, I don't really stress too much about um, like any like I'm going to work on this and then I'm going to work on this and then I'm going to work on this. All I kind of do is every night I pick something like so and so on artist said that he practices this. I should try that. Or I saw something that I really liked that I wouldn't know how to do. I'm going to think of a way to practice that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so I'm, I'm not structured in that sense. Like if you look through my my practice folder of images, they're all over the place. Some are drawing faces, some are drawing figures. There's like four or five kind of like main construction methods um, that, that it seems like most people that are good at figure drawing do. Um, and I've spent at least a day practicing each one. So like at least an hour saying like, eh, that one doesn't really resonate with me. That one does a little bit of this. Um, and I'm, and I'm really enjoying it. I don't think I'd be doing Friday paint overs um, at all had I not started doing this three or four weeks ago. Um, so, or three or four months ago, excuse me. Um, 
So I'm, I'm enjoying it. I hope that that's helpful. I hope that on this Sunday you guys are thinking about how you guys can continue to practice and level up your skills. Um, but basically, that's all I got for you today. Oh, I just realized that you guys can't see me anymore. I wonder what happened here. Um, that's not it. I don't know where it went. Oh, here we go. Now you can see me again. Um, but that's all I got for you guys. Um, it's a simple thing. It took me a long time. I wish I had realized the, the separating of the two things of deciding what I'm going to practice and what I'm going to practice. That is the biggest thing um, that's really made a difference to the point of I don't think I've missed a day of practice in since December, sometime in December maybe. Um, and it's that what I feel like practicing isn't what I practice. I set it up the night before. So um, give it a try. I would love to know if you guys do try any of those techniques or if you guys have any practice techniques that have really worked for you. I would love to hear it. Ian, what's going on, my man? Uh, we're almost done for today. We did a painting of like a seascapey fantasy thing. Um, we watched a 10 minute time lapse of it, um, which was my practice this morning. Um, if you, whatever you guys have that's working, I love to hear it because the more things that you can try, the more little things you can pick from that like this worked or this worked, uh, this didn't, maybe I can tweak it. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely try saying, like, here are the things I'm going to practice. Or I guess you could lay it out for an entire week, right? Every Sunday night you say, on Monday I'm going to practice lighting. On Tuesday I'm going to practice composition thumbnails. On Wednesday I'm going to practice um, uh, composition inside of 3D. And then all you need to do, like, if you want to practice composition, like, in 3D... You can't start with modeling, right? Because then you're going to spend that hour modeling. So, like, if I was going to do that, I would grab, like, a kit bash kit that I wanted to work with, grab a couple pieces that I want, uh, and have that all ready with, like, an HDRI already in there that has kind of, like, some type of uh, vibe that I think could work so that when I sit down to practice, I'm not fucking with setting up a scene. I'm not worrying about making a finished image that I can be proud of. I'm just going to sit there and play for an hour with the idea of composition or some specific thing that I'm trying to get across. Um, so that, that hour is actually a full hour of practice. Um, so that's what I got. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, thank you again for everyone who joined us for that super long, um, a little bit out of control, but I, I found very inspiring um, judging competition with Fabio. Uh, he's got another one coming out tomorrow. I actually don't know what it is. I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. Any suggestions you have for any of us, myself, um, Fabio, Jason, um, or Thomas, uh, we would love to hear it. Um, I hope Thomas comes back next week. I thought he was really insightful, brings a really unique perspective to it. He did. For those of you that weren't on that stream, Thomas agreed uh, to do paint overs with us one of these Fridays. We don't have a date yet. We'll figure it out. But he said it live on, on YouTube, and so I think that that's like legally binding. I'm going to say that it is. Uh, no, Thomas is, is an amazing person as, as, as a human, but his art and, and his way of working and his style is just, it blows me away. Um, he's working on something really cool right now. I can't wait to see the finished piece. And uh, so I'm really excited that he's uh, volunteered to lend his talents uh, to this. So, um, yeah, let me see. I just saw a question, which I will answer before we finish things up. Hi, first time making a live stream. How much does painting influence your professional work like in interiors? Um, that's a good question. And it's hard to say because I'm really, I've only used painting, um, like actual painting, like, we're, like we saw today. Uh, I only use that, I've only really been trying to get better at that in general in the past year and with color, like the past two weeks, really. Um it definitely, but even like the idea of thumbnailing, uh, one of the things that I talk about a lot in my course in uh, that I do a workshop that I teach at Maddie every year over in Venice, um, which is about composition, is about I make them draw. I make them draw some like very vague, rough idea before we actually get into 3D and we use a kit bash kit and and take that kind of abstractish drawing and we take it into 3D. And the thing that I have found, at least for me, since I started actually thumbnailing ideas before going through 3D, and there's a million things that I could talk about why I do that. Um, 
And some of them are just efficiency, right? Like it's easy to waste time in 3D. It's hard to waste time in 2D. Um, but from a, how that affects your brain, it's, it really flips the picture of when we work in 3D, especially if you do arc viz, generally speaking, you start with a set space and then you move a camera around to try to figure out a way to make that look cool. Um, and that's the same way that I work as far as like process goes. I don't have the freedom to say it would be really cool if, you know, like we had this huge window in this, I have a specific piece of architecture that I've been hired to portray. So I have to work within those confines. Um, and so I don't draw thumbnails of ideas, but um, by when I do personal work, generally speaking, doing a thumbnail beforehand means that the first thing I'm thinking about is 2D and then I'm figuring out what it is in 3D. So I'm kind of flipping the way that the brain is associating space and how it relates to a 2D picture plane, which means that when I'm then in 3D, I have more understanding of what's gonna happen if I move a camera a little bit down or a little bit wider or turn it or anything else. Um, it's, it's by going at it from both directions, your brain understands it on a more fundamental level in, in my view. Um, so, if you look, like if you go to my art station, on most of the images on my art station, most of them have the rough sketch. And actually, you know what we'll do is we'll pull up like uh, a rough one to give you an idea of how rough my sketches typically are. Um, it's super rough. You guys can see this, right? Yes, I believe you can. Yes, okay. Um, so if we go back, what's a good one? This one wasn't even done that long ago. Right, I like this image. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, this is what the sketch was, right? Super duper rough. But the core idea that there'd be light coming in from the right, that we had this kind of like one piece looking down in a three point perspective, is still very much alive and well in the final image. Which means when I got into 3D, I didn't waste any time trying to figure out where I wanted to put a camera. I just had to figure out how do I get something like this, which you know, obviously you need to point a camera down if you want three, per, three point perspective in that direction. And then it's like placing things in the opposite direction um, that we typically do. Uh, what's another like really rough one? This one I think's okay. This was actually for Maddie, not this year, like two years ago. It's a simple sketch, but it's obviously like what I ended up with. Not the best example. Better example, the one I actually did live um, at Maddie last year, or one of the two that I did last year live. This is the sketch. I, it's not good, and I did change some things. It's not prettily drawn um, whatsoever. So it's not that like the drawing skills matter. It's the way that it changes your understanding of the relationship between 2D and 3D. And only going in like the standard direction of, here's a thing, where can I put a camera to look good at, to saying... How do I make a thing look cool in 2D and then figure out what that entails for form and how wide of a camera is it? Like this, the picture that I painted yesterday, there is a suggestion of a lens here, right? Like this isn't a telephoto lens. Otherwise, these this would all be more compressed. This suggests, but it's also not super wide either, right? Like that's a pretty far away house uh, that still takes up a decent amount of the frame. So this is probably sitting somewhere in like the 35 millimeter range. Um, when it comes to an actual camera. The more you kind of go and try to figure out why things don't work, the more that will make sense to you on an implicit level or, or an intuitive level. And if you're not thinking about that, you're just thinking about the effects that you're getting, which is to say, you're just thinking about how it affects the final product and not about how to do it. Um, so yeah, that's how, it, that's how I think it's had the most um, significant effect on my professional work um, is just the less you need to think about and the more that you kind of understand implicitly means that that tool becomes more of a tool and less of either a crutch or a hindrance. Um, so yeah, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. I hope that answer uh, shed a little bit of light uh, in one way or another. Uh, I very, very highly recommend doing things that are related but tangential to your professional work. It'll make your professional work better in almost all ways. Uh, all right, guys. So I'll be back tomorrow, uh, normal time, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. 
So what is that? 1900 standard uh, European, Central European time or yes, CET. And I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. I, uh, it's been a whirlwind couple days, but I'll figure something out. It's going to be fun. Um, okay, one more question and then we'll go. Uh, from Ian, what if your after concept go into 3D and decide you want a different angle and lighting? Um, that depends uh, as far as like whether or not I'm willing to change it. And it depends on what I'm trying to practice. Um, if I'm trying to get better at thumbnailing, then I will probably go back and draw it again, right? Because the point of the exercise was to draw accurately what I was going to make. So if I go into 3D and um, don't like what I see, then um, I can go back and re-thumbnail like the new idea and then go back into 3D. But that's assuming that the thing that I am trying to practice, the skill that I am trying to practice uh, is drawing. If the idea is I'm trying to uh, create um, an image, I'm trying like the thing that I'm trying to practice is like evoking an emotion and I'm trying to give a sense of scale. I want to, I want to show like the idea of a person in front of a giant wall and I want the wall to feel big. Well then like whether or not I stick to the sketch or not doesn't matter. Um, and actually I have a thing that, uh, is going to be released tomorrow that we'll be talking about at length on this channel this week. I'm really excited about it. I can't tell you what it is. It's cool. Uh, in the making of it, it's a, it's a rendered image. But in the making of it, um, I went from, I actually started in 3D and then went to 2D. And then I think I went back and forth between 3D and 2D like four or five times for different reasons. That wasn't practice. I was making a thing that I had to make. Um, and I still went back and forth like three or four times. Uh, and so we'll be looking at that one way or another. Probably not tomorrow, but sometime this week. Um, so yes, yeah, depends what you're trying to practice. And it's important to know what you're trying to practice. Uh but, you know, at the end of the day, especially if you're making an image for a client or if you're making it because you want to make something that looks cool, you don't have to stick to your sketch. Um, and what you still get out of that is that that initial time you get into 3D, you can start working without thinking. And so you can at least get everything roughed out very quickly. And then if it's not looking good, figure out a way to make it look better. Um, that's kind of how I tend to be roll, uh, tend to roll when it comes to those types of things. But uh, specifically within practice, just be mindful of what you're practicing and making sure you're not subverting that. Um, okay, uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you guys for joining us on the um, Fabio stream. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me almost every day. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to keep this thing going for a while. I'm really, I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. Uh, I hope that you guys are as well. It means a lot to me um, that you guys come and spend some time with me every day. Um, uh, yeah, if you guys have paint over, send them to Mike at Droki.com uh, for next Friday. And we have some cool stuff this week. I'll be able to tell you more about it, hopefully tomorrow, definitely by Tuesday. Um, all right, that's what I got. Guys, have a great rest of your Sunday. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Be well, stay productive, and uh, happy rendering. Thank you all. Take care. Now that awkward time after I say goodbye, and then I need to find where my mouse is, I go to boop, and then there's a second button, and it goes 